So these aren't power lines that you just connected? No. Okay, so new, is that accurate, new power lines? No. No what? It's no, ma'am. You open no. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> This is the plaintiff, Marshall Ledwick. He says he hired the defendant to do some electrical work on his house after Hurricane Sandy, and the inept guy totally botched the job. Now his dishwasher doesn't run properly. His outside lights don't work, and he had to pay another electrician to fix the job correctly. Bottom line, he did a subpar job, and he's suing him for the $5,000 it cost him to have the job done right. This is the defendant, Joseph Striano. He says the plaintiff was quoted a price and then tried adding all these things onto the job for free. That's right, the guy's a mooch. There's no way he's gonna pay him five grand he paid another company to do all this extra work. And he's pretty confident the judge is gonna see things his way today in court. He's accused of shorting out. All parties, please use your right hand. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. You see the contorted bus. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. Marshall in. Ludwig, you are suing North Electric LLC, represented here by Joseph Striano. You're the owner? Yes. Okay, for $5,000. According to you, your damages are even more than that, um, that you had to shell out because, according to you, they did subpar work. Tell me what happened. Um, our house was impacted by uh, Superstorm Sandy, at which point we decided to elevate our home. Amongst the contractors that I hired was one North Electric. They came, a fellow came to the house and looked at our house and told us that the, we would charge us $4,300 to disconnect all the electrical uh, wires, rehook them up, and file with the town. Okay, do you have a contract with him? I have a, right here. Let me see that. And also, explain what you mean when you say we decided to elevate the house. We live on the water. Right. And it, it raised the house. How is that done? Um, they dig a, dig a big trench around the house, and then they put these gigantic I-beams underneath the house, and they jack the house up with uh, hydraulic jacks. And they lift it up about 10 feet. And then what do they do underneath then that? Underneath, what they do is they, have, uh, they destroy or demolish the existing foundation and floor, and then they put in new footings and new walls and floor. Uh, and they raise it about five feet, I guess, and then they lower the house down onto it. With so your house rent. ends up being how much higher than it was? About five feet. Okay. So how much did you pay for all that? Well, the whole thing? A little under $200,000. And does that come out of FEMA's pocket? And about $118,000. Okay. Um, now, what did he do wrong? Why are you suing him? What went wrong? Well, <clears throat> originally, he was going to do all of that work and file. No, okay, so he was gonna do all what work? The, the deal well, was the disconnection <clears throat> rec and reconnection of all electrical right. circuitry, service panel meter with disconnect. Right. All work to be filed, service inspection. Right. Okay, so he unhooks everything, the thing, you know, the house gets jacked up. The house up. gets up in the air, uh -huh. and now he said to me, well, he saw some other things, he needed an additional $1,200. For what? What were the other things? Electrical, electrical problems. Right, what specifically? You don't remember? He didn't itemize okay. it, the air conditioning units, uh, you know, all the, because when they lift the house up, they put these big girders underneath, and I guess it does something, you know, they dislocate wires. Okay, so, so he said, now, there's, there's been some damage in the process, and I need to get paid more money. I know what is it you said? Process. What is it you said, sir? sir? John? Come on up. You want to explain it, please? Yes, I'm actually the electrician that did yeah, the work. Great. Cool. How are you? Um, Great. The 1200 was discussed uh, for additional work that needed to be done, his dockage, dock lighting. Okay, but what to the dock lighting? Uh, to do what? New power lines to go out to the dock landing. So these aren't power lines that you disconnected? No. 
Okay, so new, is that accurate, new power lines? No. No what? It's no, ma'am. You all, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have power lines previously going out into the dock? Yes, ma'am. So were you trying to upgrade the power lines? No, or when they lift the house, the cables come from the house out to the dock. They had to disconnect them somehow because the house is elevated 10 feet up in the air. The you don't have any heavy, feet going heavy, Right, but don't you expect that to happen when you give the quote? Like, why would it yeah, be 1200 no. more dollars? How do, if I'm a homeowner and I'm planning my project out, you know the house is going to get lifted five feet. So don't you include that in your it, quote? It wasn't so much the house being lifted as it was the heavy equipment tearing up the backyard, digging trenches, and removing dockage that walkways that went out to, to the dock itself, um, which was after the fact that the house was lifted. So it really had nothing to do with, with the so actual... What, what was the new work, though, then? What, what, is, what did re you... Re-energizing the dock. The lighting on the dock, the shed in the backyard, two air handlers in no, the basement. No, slow down, that slow never... down. The shed in the backyard, did that not have power to it? And not when he came to bring it to my attention, no. It was, it's been, it has electricity in it for the last 30 years. Okay, and then what else? Well, it wasn't when he brought it to my attention. Uh, two air handlers in the basement, two air condensers. Hold on, did the air handlers in the basement have power to them beforehand? Yes, ma'am. See, that's the thing. See, I'm not understanding because yeah, that is precisely what you're hired for, to disconnect and then reconnect. If reconnect, it means you have to lay cable, then you lay cable. What, what no, on earth would it otherwise mean? So what on earth, I'm going to ask you because you're the litigant, Mr. Striano, what does reconnect mean? Connect to why is that we disconnected from the panel? Extend them to the proper, well, the whole panel got relocated. That was part of the project. The meter pan was put in, in one spot, and then, you know, due to the circumstances, the panel had to be relocated to another part of the building. But according to him, that wasn't even done right. That failed inspection, correct? Why? The panel had to be raised, uh, I think, two or three feet because the house was lifted, and it wanted to be lifted above the flood zone. Right. And what happened there? Well, okay, the general contractor who we relied on told us what the height of the Dunham plane would be, and we installed... Height of the what? Dunham plane, Dunham, which what's is a Dunham the plane? flood level. Flood level. The highest water in 100 years. It's called the Dunham plane. So then he informed us as to where that was, but unfortunately misinformed us. Okay, but... So the panel got put too low, and it needed to be... But that's on you. Well, okay, that's just or you can sue the general contractor for misinforming. You could do your own thing. But the homeowner who pays you to do it expects that the electricians will know where and to put it. it. All right, so according to you, they ask you for $1,200 more. You think it's, it's unfair and wrong, and so what do you well, do? Well, I gave him the money, and now when the house is down, okay. now I know I got hoodwinked. So now when the house is Where's down... Where's the contract that discusses the additional $1,200? <laughs> where is that? There was Why no contract. Why don't you know what's going on? Did you sub this to him? No. no. We're in... He's an employee. He's a yes. partner. What is he to He's you? He's an employee. Okay. So where is the other $1,200 that he got from the homeowner? Have you ever seen that? No. Oh. Why don't you tell us? I've not seen it. There, there is no $1,200. There is no $1,200. The agreement was for the disconnection of power. I, do you the hear my question? Of... I have a very specific question. Do you have proof you paid an additional $1,200? Above and beyond the 4300 Is that what you are saying, sir? I is have that what you are saying, that you paid $4,300 and then you paid an additional 1200 Yes, ma'am. Okay, yeah, show me the proof that you paid that much money because yeah, Mr. The, North Electric please, never saw the other 1200 no, I never saw the other $1,200. Is that, what's the deal, sir? Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm curious to see what he's submitting. I'm curious submitting. to see what he's submitting myself. 2000 3000 5500 yeah, the original contract on February 1st is for $4,300. But what he ends up paying is $5,500. So he paid you the other $1,200. So where's the rest of the money? Did you not give it to him? Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. So what does the judge do? Throw him out of court or give a fair price to the guy who did the work? I'd say give him a fair price. I mean, he's done the work, so he needs to be paid for it. But he screwed up the contract, right? No, but I think the judge can still come up with a reasonable price. But is the judge supposed to be making contracts for people? No, but at the same time, he might be able to find a third party that knows the work. Fair enough. Going inside the courtroom. The <laughs> service, uh, the disconnect, reconnect, and the electrical service upgrade 
was in the agreed price of $5,500. If you look at the receipt, it says on it, $5,500 electrical service. Is this your original contract with him that has the two signatures? Disconnect, reconnect, and service. Yeah, what's yeah. the total? $4,300. With right, so the guy down. pays you $5,500. Sounds to me like he paid you the other $1,200. Um, it wasn't for additional work. It wasn't. wasn't. It was for. Well, then the why does he pay you a red cent over $4,300? If it's not. That's oh, why. I have the checks there. That's why they work. No, he paid $5,500, and you've said for that three service. times. For the electrical service. Disconnect, reconnect, and the electrical service upgrade. Not for additional work for air handlers that didn't exist prior to. Okay, you need to reconnect. <laughs> That's what needs to happen. Okay. Then what happens, sir? What happens? Then How I, does everything go into the toilet? Well, then I had to hire another firm. And um, I, I believe I gave you those papers. And w uh, why did you have to hire another firm? because I was not going to pay him any additional money, and he hoodwinked me. He said that he was going to do everything for 4300 The excuse is his grandmother died. Then it was, um, if you give me another $1,200, i will do everything, and then it's more money over that 1200 yes, And you never saw that 1200 That's so interesting. Do you have, these are, the, uh, these are the bank statements that show that, Who's John Pellegrino? That would be me. Oh, they're going right into your pocket. The money's going directly into his pocket as an employee? It's a 1099 partnership, actually. So is he your employer? Isn't he your employee? So I want you to know, you, I want you to know that he got, North Electric got 1000 Right. And then he got 4500 Which pays for the material and the payroll. OK. But you know this? Oh, of course. OK, so then that's 5500 right. that the homeowner paid. You kept denying that he'd paid an additional 1200 over the original contract, but he did. It's right here in black and white. He paid the additional 1200 So how much more is a guy supposed to pay right. in hidden costs? So now you end up sick of being extorted, and you hire another firm, yes, which sir. is whom? Who did you hire? Uh, sure, sure. Can power. I please see their? Uh, I think I get there. In June is when you hire Shore Power, and you pay them a total of what? Uh, $4,200, I think it is. Y your opinion of this is that this is extra work That's beyond what? what he already paid extra for. But can I just see your contract with him for what the uh, other $1,200 above the $4,300 would be for? There is no contract. There's no written contract. No, there is no, no written contract. No written contract. What say you was the $1,200 for? Two air handlers that were non-existent prior to the house being lifted. Two condenser units that were relocated prior to the house being lifted. Dock lighting, shed power, relocation of oil burner circuitry. What else? That was pretty much it. All right, so now, when do you find out that where they've put the, the panel is the wrong place? When, because it failed inspection? When I, yes. Okay. Um, did you have to pay somebody else to move the panel? Yeah, sure, panel. You uh, paid sure them power. to do it. Fix outdoor outlet at rear deck. Install weatherproof GFCI with a use cover, with in-use cover. The, the cover's for the outlets outside. No, I know what it is, but wh how was that included in the original contract? Install six outdoor wall lights supplied by customer. This how was, is that included I, in the original contract? It's not. When I spoke to him, he said he would to take care of everything that I showed him that had to be done. I don't know exactly I, everything. I, I, I know, and that is your misfortune and your misfortune, because now I'm going to guess. Because if you don't have a written contract for everything else that had to be done, and he doesn't have a written contract for everything else that had to be done, I'm going to have the two of you in a war about what it is that has to be done, and I've got to use my best common sense, which I have in spades, to figure <laughs> out what it is that could possibly have been in the non-existent written contract between you two based on recreating the circumstances. And let me tell you one thing I know wasn't in that contract. Install six outdoor wall lights. No, and I know that because you wouldn't have been complaining about that because you were complaining that the 1200 was an extortion and it wouldn't have been if it was new but included new stuff 
So frankly, I wouldn't believe either one of you if your tongues came notarized. So now I would like everybody to just stop talking. Based on what I have looked at, what appears to me to be new stuff, what appears to me to not be new stuff, what appears to me to possibly have been included in the contract, part of which is in writing, part of which isn't, I am ruling in favor of the plaintiff, but not in the amount that you're suing for. I am ruling in your favor in the amount of $2,000. Verdict for the plaintiff. Good luck, folks. Thank you. Well, the plaintiff is awarded a $2,000 judgment. Mr. Striano is... Yes. <laughs> if you'll step right over there, sir. Uh, as the judge said, the two of you <laughs> have to get reconnected again. Yes, exactly. You okay? Fine. Okay. Fine, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you lost the case, okay? Cost you 2000 okay. It was fair. It was fair? It was a fair I'm glad you feel that way. Good enough. You lost, but you're leaving happy. That's, yes. that's good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. All right. The plaintiff, Mr. Ludwig, is on his way out of the courtroom. You know, the judge was having her problems with you, too. But anyway, how do you feel about the fact that you were suing for 5000 you got two? Step this way, okay? How do I Thank feel? You. Mm -hmm. I don't think justice was served. Why not? Because he didn't do the work. And I had to pay somebody additional money, almost $5,000. You didn't have enough proof, though, to convince the judge of what you were trying to get. That was your problem. Okay. It's just some poor old guy. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm okay. sorry about it. At least you got something. All right. <laughs> Harvey contracts are so important, right? Yeah, uh, contracts are super important, but sometimes when they're not done properly, the judge can do exactly what these guys said, which is to award the reasonable value of the services that are actually rendered when they try to make a contract. In the law, it's called quantum merit. Fancy legal term so I can justify the tuition that I paid in law school. That will do it for the, this case of litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, Lorraine Virouette. She says she and the defendant used to be lovers, but no more. The guy intentionally smashed the screen to a brand new laptop computer, is crying poverty, but has money to go on vacation, and she's rip-roaring mad at him. He owes her 250 bucks, and that's exactly what she's suing him for today. This is the defendant, Kyle Mullen. He says he accidentally damaged the plaintiff's laptop when she lent it to him, and since they were together, she told him, don't worry about it. Then a whole year later, her mother's boyfriend enters the picture, causing all this drama. And it went from don't worry about it to you owe me 250 bucks? Come on. He's accused of not computing. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, these litigants used to be together, but it didn't work out so well. She says he smashed the screen of her new laptop and won't pay. He says she gave him a pass. It's the case of lap dance. Thank you, Douglas. Lorraine here. Vuet. Yes, Your Honor. You're um, suing your former boyfriend and father of your child, uh, Kyle Malin. Malin. Malin for $250, the cost of an HP laptop. That alone surprises me. You were able to find a laptop for $250, for real? Um, which, according to you, he damaged and has never compensated you for. Tell me what happened. When did this happen? Uh, this happened about a year ago. Uh, I lent my laptop to him, and he... You guys have a child together? Yes, we do. How old's the child? Six months. OK. Is he paying child support? Yes, he is. OK. So a year ago, you loaned him the computer, and what happens? He, um, he called me up one day, and he said, you're going to be mad at me. And I said, why? He said, because I smashed your screen. He said he tripped over something and kicked, and kicked it by accident, which I really didn't believe. Well, that could happen if this computer's on the floor where it shouldn't be. Yeah. Either true. way, what happened to the computer? The screen had cracked. How? Exactly what you said it has been. It was on the floor. It was on the floor. And so you kicked it by accident? Tripped right, so why it. didn't you compensate her for it when you broke it? Since then, up until recently, the entire year, she's, it, it, was, it was, oh, it's fine, it's fine, don't worry about it. It's, it, I don't care, don't worry about it. But now, all of a sudden, recently, it just went from I don't care to see you in court. Okay. And I don't, I, I really don't see how that makes sense. Okay. If it was well, it's unfortunate for you if that's true, 
Uh, I presume you're going to tell me that's not true, that you never told him you didn't care. But either way, it doesn't matter. She cares now, and she wants you to pay for it, and you broke it. So what's your defense? Who's the gentleman with you? Uh, my my uh, friend and neighbor, Michael. OK. All right. Um, what would be a defense to having to pay? I mean, you broke it. So who else but you should pay for it? I, Do you have the receipt for the computer? I don't, but I have the computer itself. I in my bag. did not. How am I going to know that that's the appropriate amount? I said the screen had cracked. I did not say I had broke it. Okay, you have the computer, and the computer doesn't work. It doesn't. It works, but it's, the screen is all like mushy. It's not. Doesn't show anything. Right. So uh, can you, it's not charged. because It's you, not, no. That's the way it's been for how long? It's been like that for almost Since, a year because I don't, I don't know what happened with the charger. Okay, okay. All right, and now, um, can I see the computer? Sure. Were, were you two dating or yeah. you just had a yes, kid? Yes, at the time. Okay, so um, did you, had she told you then the computer doesn't work? Not, not as far as I can remember, no. Well, you'd remember that. Did you ever see her using the computer after you broke it? No, but I, it was, it was definitely functional. The screen was cracked, but it was functional. How do you remember that? How do, that's, how, that's why, okay, that's come why on I up. see I, I'm, him here, I'm, not, I'm sorry. Like, what's going on here? So if she says don't worry about it, can she turn around, change her mind, and sue? Yes, if it's been two days, but like not a year after. Why, well, what do you say? But yeah, don't worry about it. Pay for it. Well, no, no, no. When she said don't worry about it, she meant I'll give you a pass. But she changed her mind. Can she change her mind? Yeah, I think so, because he's the one that committed the crime. I guess it is a crime going inside the courtroom. My name is Michael Zupin. I, uh, a year ago, I saw that the screen was cracked and the computer was functional. When How did laptop. you see that? Where were you when you saw it? I was it? in his room. And where is the crack? I, I see a bunch of scratches everywhere. Oh, I see it. Yeah. There's like an... Oh, yeah, it's like shattered throughout. Right. Oh, yeah, I just had to get the right angle. Ah. Right. Okay, so according to you, you saw it, the computer worked. Yes. Right, and I have no idea if all you need is a screen change or a new computer because you lost your charger and didn't buy a new charger. Because what happened was I left it at my mom's house for a little bit because it was, I was in a move, I was moving. <sighs> so I left it with my mom, and it, apparently the charger must have got lost when my mom was moving, and I was moving around. Okay, so uh, but, but why wouldn't you try to see if you could still salvage the computer before you come to court and I, sue um, for it? The issue I have is I just don't know whether it just needs a screen change or needs... Um, I'm having such difficulty thinking that a screen change will be cheaper. Um, where did you buy the computer? ShopRite. ShopRite rules. Yeah, they had a they had a they had a uh, back to school thing. They I don't yeah. know. They just they had them in the back. They weren't or like in the front. They were in the back. How what year is the computer? Are, what year it is? Are you the one who bought the computer for her? Yes. I'm Step on up, please. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me um, how much did you pay? Two hundred and fifty dollars. And you don't have the receipt for it? No, I gave it to my daughter, and I don't know what she did with it. Do you know um, how old the computer was? It a new computer or yes? Used? Brand new. It was brand new. And do you know what year the comp what year did you buy it for? Uh, 2016, I believe. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. So it was brand new when he broke it? Yes, it yep. was. It was only like a couple weeks old when he broke it. How old are you? I'm 19. How old are you? 23. Did you make any effort to get the screen fixed for her? No. Nah, just so. So who should I count it against that I can't figure out whether the whole computer is shot or just the screen? Do you have any evidence of what a screen would cost? Not, not solid, but it would, it most likely would be either the same amount as laptop I'd or say. maybe more. Yeah, I think mean, that's probably a pretty good guess. And maybe I'm not more, but pretty close to it. Most likely taking it to- Mr. Mayland, pay the lady the $250. Are you still dating? No. no. But you're co-parenting. <laughs> You have a child together. Does he see the child? Uh, well, our child is getting adopted. Oh. That's got to be tough. But maybe the best mothering decision, or parenting decision, I should say, that the two of you make. Good luck to you. I'm ruling in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of the $250. Thank you, Your Honor.
So the plaintiff will get the 250 bucks back to fix this. You know, one gets the impression you really weren't very sorry that you hurt, hurt the computer, really smashed it. At the time, I really was sorry, but honestly, <clears throat> at the very, after a year, she had honestly went constant, constantly went over and over. The reason why we had broken up is because of all the, all, all the crap that she's put me through, emotional and mental. It was it was rough, and at the on this at the same time, I did not I did not say that I would replace it. I said that I would try because I don't make enough money. Anyway, you should be sorry, you know. And the, I was at the time. It. Okay, sorry about that. You're going to have to pay. Okay. Sorry about that. Now here comes Miss Virioet. All right. She didn't want to talk. No. I'm very happy. I would like to thank Judge Marilyn for come, come, come. the verdict. All right. She's very shy. Okay. All right. Very sad family situation here. Yes. Would you agree? I very much agree. My daughter's autistic, and, you know, she gets taken advantage of sometimes. So. All right. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Congratulations mm -hmm. to her. Oh, Harvey, what do you think about that? Here's the thing, if she said don't worry about it, that's not a settlement of anything because she has to get something in return for that to be a binding settlement. So she has an absolute right to sue. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, Santo Saparito. He says he purchased a 2006 Dodge Charger and the defendant sold him an engine which was cracked. The car overheats. They dumped a lemon on him, thinking he was a sucker. But he has rights as a customer, and he knows them. He's suing for the $3,900 it's going to cost him to fix the car. This is the defendant, Bill Christos. He says he got a call from the plaintiff complaining the car was overheating. He told him no problem, it's covered, but to get the car into the shop immediately. For 10 days, he waited for the car. Then he gets a call claiming the engine was cracked. <laughs> That's what happens when a car overheats numerous times. If the guy listened to him, none of this would have happened. And now his cracked engine repair costs are his responsibility. He's accused of unloading a hoopty. All parties, please use your radiance. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff bought a 2006 Dodge Charger from the defendant, and it had a cracked engine. The defendant says the car was overheating. That caused the crack, and it was the plaintiff's fault. It's the case of you cracked me and my car up. Thank you, Douglas. You Mr. Saporito, you are suing Power Motor Group for $3,900, the cost to fix, the cost to install a new engine? Correct. Into your car that you bought from them because you feel it's their fault. Tell me what happened. Correct. Um, I bought the car. Um, July 2017, okay? I think the 10th of August is when it started overheating. So I had called and I said, listen, um, my car is overheating. It was probably six days, seven days before they actually came and got the car and towed it to their shop, which was Prestige Motors. Work. What's Prestige Motor has to have to do with Power Motor Group? Um, Prestige Motors doesn't exist. Well, he may whatever be they about towed it. it to, whatever they towed it to, Okay, that's who fixed, that's who looked at the car. Okay, did you tell them to tow it to someplace different than Power Motors? Ooh, yeah, well, we don't have a shop in our dealership. We sublet our work, the name did of the- Did you have the, them tow it to Prestige Motors? No, it's called Long Island Auto Sports. Okay, okay. well, Prestige where did you get the Motors. name Prestige? Because this is, I have this receipt on here. All right, hand that up with, to my bailiff. Okay. okay. All right, Sorry, so in any event, so that's they That's a tow truck driver, okay. all right, yeah. So they tow it to a place to get fixed, somebody- right. At, their, at, at Power Motor Group's direction, it gets towed somewhere to get Correct. fixed, and what happens? And they told me that after two days, they said there's nothing wrong with the car, it's fine. They Cannot said the motors are working. Cannot customer complaint. What's that mean? Oh my God, you've never <laughs> heard that? No. <laughs> Half the time That's I the, take my car in, for, they're like, we can't duplicate the complaint. I'm like, okay. sure. So All now right. what I do is when something happens, I videotape, take my phone out, I videotape you know? the complaint. I'm like, duplicate the complaint. <laughs> okay. Figure All it right. out, because okay. I'm not crazy. <laughs> okay. All right. Go ahead. So I went and picked the car up. I used it for a couple of days. It started overheating again. Okay. I brought it to my garage now. When I brought it to my guy... How did you bring it to your guy? I drove it to him. And how far is he? Probably a mile or two away. Okay. What's the name of your place? Um, uh, MZM. Do you have a... Uh... Yes, I do. Okay, let me see it. And what? And we know your address, so I'll figure yes. out just how close it is. You want to revise the estimate of one mile? Excuse me? How far is your mechanic... Uh, really? Two miles, probably. 
Something okay. like that, two, three miles? Two, three, four, five? Yeah, something <laughs> right. like that. Okay. <laughs> Go on. Um, when they looked at it, they found that there was a cracked head. And that's what was, you know. Was it overheating on the way over there? Um, no, because I would add fluid to it to get it to the spot. Okay. Do you have pictures? Um, there's one picture. Um, I think you guys might have it, because I have it on my phone. I'll, I'll look at it on your phone. see the phone? Okay. Yeah. But the, dro the car drove fine with a cracked head is what you're saying. It overheated. Okay. I'm just curious. Okay. Wait, what was your question? Uh, if the car had a cracked head, it wouldn't be able to go from Pete's place, which is where we towed the car on our behalf just to accommodate the gentleman. It would have never made it What do you mean back. just accommodate? He bought a $1,500 warranty. What do you well, mean The warranty is not from us. The warranty is between him and the bank. You don't do the servicing for the warranty? Correct. Yes. But the point of the conversation is that he drove 20, 30 miles as he stated. Wait, if you don't do the servicing for the warranty, mm -hmm. then why didn't he make a claim on his warranty for the service? It's not covered. He did try to oh, make a claim. Oh, you did try, and it's not covered. Document, yeah. But after a crack. Hold on one second. It's not covered? Isn't there a lemon law, 30 days? No, not on a, this is a used car, right? Yeah. No, right. lemon law, every, people hear that all the time about lemon law, but that pertains to brand new cars. It doesn't pertain to used cars. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah, really. All right. What I you have is that. the exact warranty you bought. That's what you have. Okay. And the warranty you bought says what? We don't cover overheating. Um, but we do cover crack Well, they engine. sent me something. Wait a minute. You can't just Sorry. yell over me. <laughs> Who's that lady there? That's Terry, my girlfriend. Okay, does he do that to you too? Yeah. Can overheating cause an engine to crack? Yes, it can. How so? Oh, well, it's overworking the engine, so it, it, it could cause damage. I know, cause a crack. Okay, since I know nothing about that, I'll accept it. Going inside the courtroom. When your guys okay. looked at it, did they look at the, what is it, the cracked engine block? Yeah. Was, there was no cracked engine block. Test drove car multiple times, cannot duplicate issue. May I see what you're reading? So you guys five miles away, by the way? Okay. Okay. Not one mile away. I was close. All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you take your car um, to your guy, and your guy says, replace customer supplied engine. Where's the actual, do you have, oh, here we go. No, that's the same thing, replace customer supplied engine. Did they ever write something up saying what was wrong? With the engine? Yeah. No, it's just what they say on there that's, uh, so what's, that So how are you going to prove up? that the engine had a crack in it. Did because you the picture's on there. Okay. That's inside the cylinder, which is part of the head. Let me show it to you. I see a hole in something. I don't know if that's an engine block. I don't know if that's a, a cylinder. rotor disc. Does it look like a is. cylinder? It doesn't look like a cylinder to me, but it could be. I'm not a mechanic, I know do I you know, try to be one. That's why I pay people to do that type of work for the dealership. Um, did you, I'm I, trying to understand why you take the car to begin with if you are not, or did, did you have a, was there a warranty yes. that you? Yeah, oh. there's a warranty, so we tried helping him. No, no, but, okay, so you said that's between him and the bank. You are the people who are giving the warranty. The warranty administers through our dealership in the package of the banking paperwork. Yeah, the but bank the, he can't it. take it to his own mechanic and then well, send a bill to the bank. Not to the bank, May the I see the warranty company. please? I have it. Whoever has it. Let's make sure it's the same thing. I actually want it for both of you. Boom. Okay. And it's not a proprietary warranty. He does not need to come to me to make a repair. So he can go to any mechanic shop, any inspection station. Claim so why did you get involved at all? Because I'm a nice guy. No, you're not. I want to help no. the man. Either that or you were to, Come on. I, I don't, I don't I, get I take why care you of my get customers. involved. He calls me, it's an overheating issue, no problem. I'll take a look at it, I have no problem. The car had been in your possession for how long at that point? Uh, about three weeks. And, and then your warranty tests. company says, hey, too bad, so sad. We don't, actually what they say is we don't cover overheating issues. So you brought this lawsuit against the people who sold you the car because your feeling is they sold you a lemon. Correct. Do you have the paperwork from the transaction so I can see what, if any, warranty you specifically gave him? Do you have the paperwork of the actual sale of the I car? Do. Okay, sold with warranty. This vehicle comes with a dealer warranty, the details of which are specified in a separate warranty form. You're the dealer, mm -hmm. so you do warrant it. I give him 30 days. 
How many miles were on this car? 96,000. So it's under 100,000. Correct. Which is relevant in your state because under 100,000, you have to give what kind of warranty? 30 days, 1,000 miles. The purchase was what day? 715. Is that correct? July 15th, yes. And the date that you came into him was what? The August. Date? Uh, it should be on uh, the date. Yeah. So I know it's within the 30 days because he takes it in within the 30 days. So when you say I have nothing to do with the warranty, that's incorrect because he brings it to you within the 30 days of the 30-day warranty that you must by law give him. Okay. The warranty that is sold with the vehicle in yeah, this that's particular a case that that's supersedes our warranty. What does that mean? It means that the warranty is superseded. The so lemon says will who? You? You no, have to give him the 30-day warranty, so no. If he didn't have a warranty, it would be my coverage on his covered components. Yeah, so no, I think the reason that you took it in is because he called within the 30 days. That's no, why you took no, it in. Took now it, it makes sense nice that guy. you take it in. Not because I'm a nice guy. I'm a now nice it's because guy. it's under the 30 days. <laughs> I got it. No, I don't want you to interrupt. Okay. Hold on. Get your mechanic on the phone from uh, the second place. Can MZM? you do that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hi, this is Sal uh, Saparito, the guy with this 2006 Charger. Okay. Uh, I'm in people's court right now with the judge. She wants to speak to you. Okay. Okay. Bring What's his name? What's, his, oh. What's your name again? Joe. Joe. What is, what is Okay, here she is. <laughs> How do we know this is the mechanic? <laughs> hi, Joe. Hello. I have some questions for you. What was wrong with the car? Uh, it had a crack in the, in the cylinder wall. How does a crack in the cylinder mm -hmm. wall happen? Hot and cold, expanding, contracting. Driving it while it's overheated? Yeah, it probably was overheating because of the crack. Okay. Does this sound like a mechanic to you? <laughs> Thank you so much for your help. We're going to hang up now. <laughs> Thanks. What dates on Did you the, actually uh, put in the new engine? Yes, I paid for it. Okay. I bought do it from you have Wyoming. the receipt? Yes, I do. Here's the engine right here. Let me ask you to argue this point. If he has a 30-day warranty with you, and the 30-day warranty includes the engine being defective, okay? And he alerts you within the 30 days that there's something wrong with the engine. But the guy you have it towed to does not spot it. But the exact same problem happens within days, and he takes, when he picks it up from your guy, and he takes it to his own guy, and his own guy says, look, this is why you're, this is happening, because there's a crack in here. Why isn't it your issue? Okay, the reason it's not our issue, number one, there's a warranty on the vehicle. If it was an engine, it would have been covered by warranty. If it was negligence No, no, on the, the idea is that you sold him the engine with the crack and that the crack caused the overheating. The warranty company doesn't cover the overheating. And, you know, I'm not, I, I am not deluded into thinking somehow, nor do I, I check out your fancy footwork and be convinced that because there's an, he has a warranty policy that he paid $1,500 for that denied him he's out of gas, because that, quote, supersedes your 30-day... No, the reason why you took it in, towed it, paid for the tow, and paid somebody to look at it is because it's within those 30 days. Um, so, no. That's not true, but okay. okay. I mean, that's... We're all entitled. I'm I, done. I'm ruling in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of the $3,900. That's my verdict. Thank Good you, luck, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Well, after a lot of talk about warranties and dates and coverages, the, play, the judge decides for the plaintiff and gives him the $3,900. Why do I think you disagree with the judge? Um, as, because the, it's clearly marked that the car wasn't covered. It clearly marked that it broke due to negligence on the owner's you part know, because, heard, you we, know... We've heard a lot of... The, I'm sorry, you put up a valiant fight. I did, I tried. Hey, you can't you. win more. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. You. Here comes the plaintiff, Mr. Spirito. All right. Saparito. Saparito. Sorry. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you very much. You must feel really Thank good you. right I now. I do, yes. Okay. You fought it out. You want Just what about been the done. car, by the way? Oh, I love it. I got a new engine in it. It it's runs great. Running great? Yeah. And you're happy. Yes, I'm very okay. happy. Okay. Congratulations. Thank and you're you, a winner sir. on the people's court. Yes, I am. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Harvey. Hey, Doug, this is a really good example of a case where you should insist on a warranty when you buy a car. Even if they say there's no warranty, you can always negotiate one. And if they say no, and you really want one, just buy another car.